we're going to move on and jump into financial maths. Um, just checking, what are we at? We're at an hour and four. So we'll hopefully spend about 50 minutes on this, to be honest. I think that's sort of what I wanted for this, and then five minutes on tips. I know I only had like 15, but the tips will take us five minutes. So financial maths. Recursion, it's a tiny bit of stuff you need to know. Financial modeling, most of the stuff you need to know. So we're going to fly through recursion because I don't love recursion, and it's just very basic, easy, not difficult, um, and there's usually like two marks out of the entire finance sections. Um, on it, so it's not worth spending time on. So, first, let's get very familiar. You need to know your financial solver like the back of your hand. The financial solver is used for everything. Know where it is on your calculator. So for this white one here, I go to menu, and then you'll find that, I'll figure out where is it? You find there's a finance section. And you click on it, and it comes up with this. Hopefully you can see that, you probably won't, but that's okay. There's a finance section in your menu. It's on the second page of your menu, unless these have changed because I probably haven't updated mine in about five years. Really important, you know where that is. For the TN Inspire, I'm not 100% sure where that is, but you need to know where your financial solver is. Your financial solver should look something like this. It might be, it'll be a little bit different to this, but it needs to look something like this. You'll have N, your interest rate, your previous value, your payments, your future value, and then your PPY, CPY, which are a bit useless because we don't ever, really ever work with them. But they're there. So the other thing that's really important is to understand your negatives and positives. When you use a financial solver, if your money is negative, you are giving it to the bank. It's saying, I know for, for us, when money's in the bank, given our bank system and how safe it is, it's a very hot topic at the moment, given all the banks closing down around the world. Um, Australia is highly regulated and our banks, that would very, very rarely happen in our banks. Um, our banks, when we give money to the bank, we think of it as that's still our money. We can just do what we want with it. We can tap our card. We can, it doesn't matter. That money is still ours. What this is assuming is when you give money to the bank, yes, you can access it, but it's no longer your money. It's the bank's money. The, it's now the bank's money. So you're negative. You're giving your money away. When, it's, when you get the money back, so when you spend that money or you, you, know, you get it back in cash or whatever, that's positive money. So when you take the money out of the bank, that's positive. You're gaining the money back. And it's really important that you understand that difference. Please understand that difference for the sake of this. So that's your financial solver as well. Um, and just quickly on the summary book, because I did want to just quickly put this in here. The reality is finance really does suck. It is the hardest section on the exam, um, period. It is the hardest section. Um, and you will struggle to get your head around it at the start. That's just what happens with finance. Um, and what the reality is with the summary book is it also kind of sucks. And one of the reasons I really detest the way finance is sort of taught is, and it's the way, it's the way that the textbooks put it out. So the textbooks summarize all the sections, which is really useful. So, you know, when you go through a textbook and you do the questions, it's on each little question type or little subsection. That's really useful when you're learning things, and that's why textbooks are great. But for finance, the issue is when you get to exams, it's never broken up into little subsections. Unlike data and unlike you know your other modules, it's not broken into subsections. There is no subset subsectioning of it. They are no longer like that. How they are broken up is there's no breaking up. They mash them all together. And they make you figure out from reading the question, what formulas are you going to use? What numbers are you going to utilize? What's the actual answer they're asking for? What value are they asking for? That's the trick with finance. Finance is all about reading through your question and figuring out what you need to do and what they want. They are the two things you need to figure out before you start writing anything on your page for a financial question. What do I need to do? What do they want? That is, they are the two things. And that's why textbooks can, I find with students, textbooks are great for the first half of finance, but the second half of finance, when you're starting to like, you know, practice for SACs and exams, students get stuck in a rut. They sort of, they go like this. They go, all right, uh, I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. And then it's like this, they plateau. They are unable to get to this sort of, this is where they need to be. And they're unable to sort of go, all right, I'm plateauing and then jump up here because they stick with textbooks. Really important. Textbooks 
ask questions broken down into subsections. You need to be, once you've done all the textbook questions and you're comfortable with all the different formulas, you need to start doing exam and stack sack style questions where you figure out what you need. So I'm gonna simplify things down because then for your summary book, it's really difficult. For your summary book, you need, what I would say is, first of all, do it in your workbook. Each time you do a topic, make it a subheading and go like, you know, simple interest and then write down all the information of simple interest and do depreciation and write down all the things for depreciation, financial solver, definitions, etc. Once each page is filled out with notes and examples, summarize it into your reference summary book. Now, that is breaking it up into sections and you're going to say, well, that's not what you were telling me to do. I want you to do that so that you have the basics. After that, your summary book should consist of how do I work through examples that use multiple steps and are confusingly worded? Because that's a lot of what financial financial is. It gets confusingly worded. It's probably a better way of saying that, but I'm not an English tutor. So that's really, really important to understand. So initially your summary book should have each of the sort of sets or the little subsets sort of set out. And then after that, it needs to be how, do, how does everything intertwine? How does everything sort of come together? What are really tough examples? How do I sort of work my way through examples where there's multiple steps and I'm not really sure what I'm doing? That's what your summary book needs to look like after that. Um, and that's a really important thing to me is that you need to sort of have your summary book, your summary book in a sense sort of broken down into two sections for finance. Um, so that's sort of just my point. Now, we're gonna jump.